Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton and I'd like to welcome you to a presentation on utilizing technology to support differentiated learning. This is being presented at the Stannis Conference in 2013 here in Rochester, New York. We're going to talk about flipping, self-instruction, and blogging all supporting differentiated learning. My name is Dan Fullerton. I'm a physics teacher at Aronda Quaid High School and I'm also the author of the A Plus Physics webpage and associated materials. So what is a flipped classroom? Well, it's the idea is that you're going to take the delivery of your more mundane, your rote instruction, and do that when the kids are outside of the classroom. Typically, in science and math classrooms, that's done by providing short video lectures that they watch for homework. Then that allows you to do a lot more in-class learning through activity. Um, inquiry and exploration labs that take, a little, that take a little bit longer. Problem solving and homework in the classroom where the students can work with each other and you're there to supervise and assist when they get stuck. And a little bit more time for discussion and debate and exploring topics of interest to the students. So all you're doing is you're taking that rote instruction piece, taking it outside the classroom to leave you more time for hands-on activities inside the classroom. Now, what flipping is not? Because there are a lot of misconceptions about flipping your classroom. Number one, flipping is not learning by video. Learning by just watching a video seems to me to be one of the worst ways to possibly learn something. Probably not effective, probably not fun. It's also not Khan Academy where you see these videos of students lined up in computers in a computer lab just watching videos and using that for their instruction. That's not the point of what we're talking about here. It's also not a teacher replacement. If anything, you really need a highly skilled teacher in order to implement this effectively. And it's certainly not a teacher vacation. You do a lot more work up front creating the videos, first of all, for the students, and you're just as busy in the classroom supporting the students with those hands-on activities. It's much more dynamic from my, uh, from my perspective, much more fun because it's more interactive. You don't have that big direct instruction piece that you sometimes need in the classroom when you're delivering some of that material. Instead, you put that piece off to the side to give you more time to work with the kids during the class time. It's certainly not a magic bullet to fix all the problems of education. It's certainly not a magic bullet for every classroom. It really depends on the instructor and your style, but it's another tool in your toolbox, another weapon in your arsenal that you can use to help kids learn. And it's certainly not the same in every classroom. When one classroom flips, that could be a very different implementation from what you see in another flipped classroom. My physics classroom is flipped very differently from many other teachers who have flipped their classroom. It's really dependent upon the instructor's style, what they're comfortable with, and what works best for the students each and every day. So the flipped classroom is instead student-centered. It's all about targeting the needs of the individual student in a standards-based educational environment. You differentiate it for students and teachers. The student who needs a little bit more, little bit of extra time can use that video and watch it again. Watch it more slowly, pause, try and do problems along with the instructor. Those who have it more quickly can go right through. They can also focus on areas of their greatest need and it's differentiated for the teacher because you can put your own personal spin on everything that you're teaching. It's certainly extremely flexible. It leaves you so many more opportunities in the classroom to do the things that you want, to dive more deeply into certain areas, or to spend some more time on certain topics where the kids are struggling. It also provides you more time to empower the students, more ability to empower the students. They can take control of their own learning. And this becomes very, very effective, very, very potent when you combine it with something like a standards-based grading scheme. Finally, it really helps build independent learning skills in the students, which from my perspective is one of our biggest jobs as science instructors. So some benefits of flipping. Number one, you get more one-on-one -on -one and small group time with the students. Very effective in those small groups because you're not delivering that whole class instruction uh, nearly as regularly. It gives you an increased opportunity for active learning, hands-on type activities. It's great for students who have missed class. I don't know about you, but every day or two, I have one or two students coming in who missed various classes and the most famous question, did I miss anything yesterday? Well, of course you did. What did I miss yesterday? Well, here are the notes. There's a video that has a short 10 minute synopsis of our lesson. That'll at least get you started. Why don't you go in the back of the room, find a computer, watch the video for 10 minutes, come back up here and then that'll give us a common baseline from which to start our discussion to cover what we missed. 
very, very efficient compared to the standard reteaching and reteaching and reteaching that you have to do quite often with students who are absent. And finally, it's a built-in review system, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit, but it's very effective for preparing for midterms, finals, things like that. Now, how to flip your classroom. Well, first off, I would recommend starting small and simple and grow as you can feel comfortable. There are a wide variety of uh, pieces of equipment you can use, software packages, and you can go from the very simple and straightforward to the very complex with lots of bells and whistles. Start small, figure out what you're comfortable with, and then grow from there. You probably have the necessary equipment, or at least most of it, already. You need some sort of computer. That can be a PC, a Mac, a Linux machine. It can even be an iPad. You need a webcam, or if you have an iPad, that webcam's probably built in. Um, a microphone, if you don't have a microphone built into your computer or your webcam. But that's really what you need to start. So I want to start by showing you a couple examples. We'll begin here with one of my examples uh, that has quite a few bells and whistles. Um, a more complex, technically, video. What is Nicholas the Knight's linear velocity? Wow, that does not look pleasant. Well, and this was made on a Mac computer using Camtasia for the Mac. I'm writing on a Wacom uh, DTU1631. That's an interactive pen display that allows you to write on the screen and record that as you go. I'm using a Blue Yeti USB microphone right beside me here. And I've got a little video there just to liven it up. Now here we have a chemistry teacher, Tyler DeWitt, who's done some amazing things with his video lessons. He's quite popular on YouTube and his own webpage as well as Socratic.org. And he uses manipulatives in some of his videos. So here's an example of him using the manipulatives along with uh, an Elmo recorder. This is what it looks like on salt and salts. Right. Now let's take our sugar. Here's our grain of sugar. And finally, here we have Dr. Tom Altman. He's a physics uh, physics instructor at Oswego High School, and he does this as well, but he does a very simple version, but it's still very effective. He's taking an old Regents exam and walking through it, solving each problem as he goes. He has his students watch these as part of their review before the Regents exam. If you know that any charged particle... Just writing on the paper, recording it with his voice as he goes, doesn't even have his, have his face in there. So, a bunch of different ways you can do this, from the less complex to the very complex, depending on your level of comfort. So, as opposed to worrying too much about the technical details to begin with, let me give some helpful hints as you get started, more philosophical in nature. First off, try and focus on a single standard or objective in each lecture. Keep them short, keep them sweet, keep them to the point. If you keep those videos short, you'll probably keep the kids engaged most of the time. And when you have them watch, watch the videos, have them take notes or work along with you. Have them do some active learning activities as they're watching because just staring at the screen for 10 minutes isn't going to do anybody any good. Try and plan out the videos in advance. Um, you don't want to go just have a white screen, make your video once and say, yep, that'll do it. You're going to save yourself so much time if you think about what you want to accomplish, what you want the, want the kids to be able to do when they're done as you start each video. That will help tremendously. Also, hold students accountable for watching the videos. Don't reteach the material. If they didn't watch the videos, that's their problem. While everyone else is getting a head start on an assignment, you three, you didn't watch the videos. You guys go catch up on the videos now while everybody else is working. Pretty soon, the students quickly realize that they really need to watch the videos to be successful. The other tech that I've taken in my classrooms is having the discussion with the kids. Let's be frank. I can either give you a 10 minute video to watch at night or I can give you this worksheet of problems. I'd much rather have you guys watch the video at night so I'm here to help you with the problems if you get stuck. However, if you're not watching the videos, if that's not, being, if that's not working successfully for our class, we can switch it around and go back to standard instruction where you're going to be doing the problems at night for homework where you don't have help. All of a sudden it's amazing how peer pressure helps get the uh, couple students who aren't on board right on board and watching the videos consistently. And finally, try not to let technology become the focus. The videos, the technology behind this is not the point of the activity. It's to give yourself more hands-on time with the students in that class time. That's so valuable. So don't let technology become the focus. It's not about the technology. It's about the instruction tailored to each individual student. So now to get into the technical details. 
Um, for PC or Mac, TechSmith products are the Cadillac of software packages. They're fairly reasonable in price, they have a lot of bells and whistles, they work very well, and they are targeted directly for this sort of thing. You're not taking another software packages, package that's not designed for flipping the classroom and then flipping with it. You're taking something that has really been designed to flip the classroom, and it works great, very smooth. Their first level offering is called Jing. It's an online uh, video maker that's free. Um, a good starting point if you just want to play around a little bit. Their more popular packages, for the PC you have Camtasia Studio. That's, I think, $299 list, but the academic price is about $179, and you can oftentimes find coupons for it. Uh, yeah, it looks a little expensive, but it is a very worthwhile package. I've used Cam Camtasia Studio quite regularly. Makes making videos so simple, so easy, with lots of bells and whistles as you want to add them. And for the Mac, they have Camtasia Mac. It's about $75 for the academic version, and you can find it cheaper with certain coupons. Still another very good package. That's what this is actually being made with at the moment. Um, not quite as many bills and whistles as the PC, but it still works pretty well. Lots of things to keep you busy and, uh, and playing around with buttons and lights for quite some time. Now there are also non-TechSmith packages, things like Screencast-O-Matic for the Mac or PC. That's free for videos up to 15 minutes, and for anything longer you pay $15 per year. I haven't used that in a while, but they have a free download version you can try out. Adobe Presenter 9 is a PC PowerPoint plugin that allows you to make PowerPoints, and then you'll have an extra menu at the top of PowerPoint that allows you to record with your webcam. It'll record your face, it'll record the actions on the screen, and help bundle all that up and put it into a nice format when you're all done. It runs about $150. I used this so eight, nine years ago when I started working for RIT doing some of their distance learning classes. And a very good software package, although it's not designed from the ground up for flipping classrooms, where I've actually found that the Camtasia products are a little bit more, uh, more user-friendly and a little bit easier for this specific purpose. Um, ScreenFlow 4 for Mac, $99, another good software package. They offer a free trial. But again, I think if you're going to spend that kind of money, go get the really good package that has such a, such a customer base of flipping teachers, the uh, Camtasia products. And there are a bunch of others, of course, as well. You can find lots of free ones, public domain ones. Feel free to try them out. Very easy. You can also do this on iPad or Android. TechSmith has a free package called ScreenChomp. There's also TouchCast, with this, which is free, and Explain Everything for iPad or Android, which is about $2.99 currently on the app stores. In the bottom left here, what you can see is the screen chomp uh, screen. I took the beginning slide from the presentation here, put that there, and in the next slide I'll show you a little example of what you can do there. I don't do most of my flipping videos there, but what I find that really great for is with an iPad, it's awfully easy when you're grading an exam and a student makes a mistake that's pretty unique, to take a quick screenshot of it, use that as your background, and then hit the record button. Just talk to the student as you annotate the, uh, the screen with an iPad. Hey, you did this a little bit wrong, why don't you try this next time? Very quick and easy to make a one minute video and share it with the student. Nice easy share button when you're all done that uploads it right to the web and gives you a web link. You can email that web link directly to the student. You don't have to do any more work. And the student then just clicks on the link and they get a little personalized exam review. So when you're looking over especially things like more complicated free response problems and you see an error that you really don't want to take time out from the entire class to do with everybody and you're not sure you're going to be able to pull the student aside with enough time especially when you have a bunch of students in the class it's a nice little tool is your grading exams to give students personalized feedback and explain everything same basic idea a bunch more bells and whistles I haven't used that one quite as much just because for flipping the classroom itself I tend to use my uh, my Mac currently and previously my PC. So let's take a look at that screen chomp example. All right, here we have just a quick example of what we can do with screen chomp here at the Stannis 2013 conference. Um, I can highlight things with that little red marker. I could highlight other things with a slightly bigger marker. Or I can even go and highlight there. And anything that I don't want, I can easily just go back and erase the parts that I don't want. Now where I find this app useful isn't so much for flipping the classroom as much as it is when I'm grading exams and I see something that a particular student has done that I really don't want to take time to go over with the entire class. 
can take a quick snapshot of that page of the student's exam, make a few notes and annotate it as I talk about what error they might have made and how they could go about correcting that. Then all I have to do when I'm done is stop recording. There's a very quick process to upload it to the ScreenChomp server, and when it's done, it gives me a link to that video. All I do then is just email the student the link to that video, and they have a personalized review of a particular exam question. All right, so let's move on here and talk about some of the input devices. Webcams, just about any USB webcam will do that can even be built into your computer. Um, Logitech's probably the most popular maker of these. Um, the microphone can use most any USB microphone. It can be built in. If you have a webcam, it has the uh, microphone built in. If you're looking for something a little bit higher end to give you a little bit better sound quality, a uh, USB mic like the Blue Yeti USB mic, about 100 bucks, is a very good quality mic for the money. But again, that's it definitely when you're at the more advanced level willing to, uh, to step things up a bit. Now, as far as pen input, there are a lot of choices here, and Wacom is the leader in all of these choices. At the lower end, you can get bamboo digitizers for $50 to $200, where the digitizers is basically a slate that you then have a special pen and you write on and it shows up on your screen. Now, they start at about 50 bucks. I think they're $80 for a wireless version, and as you get bigger and bigger slates, they become more and more expensive, but very reasonable to start off with the small wired one for $50. The problem I have with those is you're writing on one surface and you're looking somewhere else to see where it shows up, which definitely takes some practice and sometimes you see not as neat handwriting. I've done that for a few videos, but it really drove me nuts and I found I was concentrating more on the writing than I was on the actual presentation and teaching. So as you go to a higher level, the Intuos digitizers are about $350 to $800. Those are more for graphic artists, so if you see those, um, bigger areas, more resolution on them on the slates, but the same idea as the bamboo digitizers. And at the high end, you have things like the Wacom Cintiq and interactive pen displays. Um, what I'm working on now is an interactive pen display that allows you to write on the screen itself, and you're seeing that on the monitor. So it's really a, an extra monitor that accepts pen input as you go. And those started about a thousand bucks, so definitely a bigger uh, investment. Now, what do you do once you've made these videos? Well, probably the most popular platform by far is YouTube. It's free, you get unlimited, unlimited storage and bandwidth, but not all schools have access to YouTube. So TechSmith offers a service, screencast.com, where you can get a free account with two gigabytes of storage and two gigabytes of bandwidth per month for free. Or if you wanna to upgrade to the pro level, which is about $10 per month, it's 25 gigabytes storage and 200 gigabytes of bandwidth per month and those usually aren't blocked by schools. Or you can host it yourself. Um, I do that on A Plus Physics. I put my videos up there as well as on YouTube so folks can see it um, both at school and outside of school in a number of different places. So <clears throat> if you're looking for more resources for flipping, on the handout that I gave out at the class, you can find more detail. Um, and if you have more questions, please feel free to contact me. Shoot an email to dfullerton at aplusphysics.com and I'd be happy to help out. Just take a minute here to look at a couple student reflections regarding flipping. Uh, one student, I got a bad flu and was out for two weeks. The notes and videos definitely saved me from certain failure. Well, that's kind of the point. Or what I didn't learn in class for weeks, I learned here in 12 minutes. I got that from a student who wasn't actually in my class but saw the YouTube video. And it's not that other teachers aren't effective, but sometimes just hearing something presented in a different way can be effective. So hearing it from a different source or a slightly different take on a concept. Getting that from multiple viewpoints sometimes resonates with different students. The videos are extremely helpful and fantastic for review and perfect for studying for my final. And we're going to talk about ways to use this to study for midterms, finals, things like that here in the next section on self-instruction.